Okay, guys. Um, I ran completely out of parts or any other material with which to restore the ever ready entry. So, I thought it would be fun if we watched together, uh, or rather had a look inside this Sencore Universal Video gener Generator, uh, a model VG91, and have a look whether we can bring it to life or not. Remember, I got it cheaply, but all because um, the text mentioned under the picture of this video generator said that they weren't sure it works. Uh, I can't really test it in the sense that I can't branch it to a TV right now because I don't have an NTSC TV set. Uh, however, uh, we can see if we can uh, uh, make the how to say the display uh, light up and see if we can set anything and then we'll see with the oscilloscope if it puts out uh, a certain uh, signal you know uh, specifically a, a, a typical kind of uh, modulated signal uh, we'll see anyway uh, first thing to do is to open up the box and I think I'll start by taking out these screws uh, all around the back edge of the device and then we'll see from there so Give me a moment to open up the box. Okay, so I took off the back edge of uh, of this VG91 Sandcore uh, video signal generator, and hmm, well, uh, I'm not much further on. Uh, or rather, I'm not much closer to opening it up. So I think I will have to look for another way to open it. So uh, let me just plot on and I'll give you an update as soon as I find a way to get into it. Okay? So I'll well, see you in It turned minute. out to be surprisingly easy to open up the box in fact. So uh, I seem to have done the right thing after all, uh, which is to uh, take off the back from the machine and then uh, the top just slid off. You just pull it a little bit back and then you lift it up and that was it. So uh, this is a view, a top view of the inside of the video generator. Now there is a whole bunch of capacitors here. I suspect this to be the main power supply that juices the whole machine. Uh, here's a big, big transformer. So obviously uh, this was uh, uh, a little before the time they started to use switched power supplies. So, uh, which is nice actually, it makes it a little bit easier for me to repair anything um, if uh, the power supply uh, would have any kind of problem. Um, at the back, uh, I can see the fuse holder, uh, which is down here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's that little grayish box. Uh, below the varistas here or maybe they are capacitors it's hard to tell I think they are capacitors yes anyway it's a sort of a noise suppression uh, filter uh, which would be logical on this high frequency uh, machine anyway um, here is a a little high frequency box 
Um, what it does, I don't know. But if I follow this BNC connector to the BNC connector on the outside, it says, aha, RF IF output. So indeed, this inside of this box, which is pretty well sealed up with a whole lot of screws, and it's also heavy metal, um, I suspect inside this box there is a, a frequency generator, uh, which is voltage controlled, I think. Or maybe this is a, 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 an RF amplifier. Uh, I don't rightly know, but I think it's either one. Either an amplifier or a generator. Um, it's a very neat PCB inside with SMD chips. Which is kind of funny because this is late 80s sort of stuff. Uh, because the classical integrated circuits would be more like this one. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this is uh, more recent. Um, there's a little bit of dust inside of here, but not, nothing too bad. Hmm. I think these two, these, these big uh, integrated circuits must be ROMs. Um, for the small computer inside of this uh, machine uh, or maybe the, I should say a PLC. Um, underneath this box I don't know what there is underneath this but I suspect this is also high frequency stuff since it's uh, protected by a metal can. Um, I can lift the cover I suspect. Let's see. Yeah, and what's underneath? Oh, yeah. Um, I think this must this must be high frequency stuff. Hmm. Okay, there's nothing special to see as such. Uh, there's a crystal there, but aside from that, a lot of SMD parts. And that's really about it. Okay, so let's close it up again. Since there's nothing really that special to see for the moment. I saw no obvious damage either. So that's okay. The capacitors look okay. They don't le look bloated. They don't seem to have leaked. Uh, so that's okay um, I don't see any repairs or anything I do see this this soldered on uh, capacitor right here uh, but uh, let me see if I can focus uh, there you are um, I don't know whether this capacitor is a repair or a a correction uh, made at the factory. It, it looks very cleanly done, so I suspect it is a factory change. Hmm. Okay, so let's turn this thing over and have a look at what's underneath. Okay, so this is the underside of the sand core. And um, my, this is really neat. Um, there's a very big chip here, um, which I suspect must be a processor, but I can't read what's written on top of it. Let me have a look with a magnifying glass. Oh, it's very hard to make out. Hmm. Clock 31 BB. Uh, I wouldn't know which type of processor is inside of here, 
Uh, this is a ROM. I suspect with firmware in it. Uh, this must also be a sort of a processor. And a Psi Core X. 2816 CP20. Hmm, might be a ROM. This is probably a reprogrammable ROM. This is a permanent ROM. And all these other chips must be something like uh, memory chips, I suspect. There's also a Philips chips here. SAA 1043P. Huh, this might be a sort of a frequency generator, I suspect. Um, okay, all the other chips uh, must be logic circuits. Uh, well, I don't see any obvious mistakes. I see a very small relay here. Uh, I suspect that has to do with... Uh, switching the whole board on or off uh, once the power supply works maybe uh, I don't have a schematic of this machine so I can't really tell the one thing I can say though is that it's extremely neatly done um, it's a very neat machine uh, really I can't fault it's it looks it looks perfect it looks like something which I would have loved to build myself a few years ago so um, yeah I don't see any obvious mistakes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on my uh, uh, separation transformer and on the variac and uh, well let's just power it up and see what it does uh, at worst it some part can explode or something or just burn through uh, there is a fuse and I already already measured the fuse so the fuse is okay so uh, yeah why not let's just power it up and see what it does Okay, so give me a moment. Okay, so I connected up the sand core, uh, which is in the middle of my workbench, uh, up to the separation transformer or the safety transformer, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I connected the transformer up to my variac. So I'm going to bring up power nice and easy until it gives out around about 117 volts which should be approximately what you get at a power outlet in america and then um, well then i'll switch on the sand core or rather i'll switch on the sand core before i turn up the var variac and uh, we'll see what it does so, uh, hang on, uh, I'm getting prepared and I'm going to show you what happens while I turn up the Variac, okay? So give me a moment.